Hello, and welcome to our webinar on Master Studies at KTH Royal Institute of Technology. My name is Kimberly Chang, and I'm an admissions officer here at KTH. And joining me today are... Uh, Bjorn Bergen. I'm a regional director for Southeast Asia, and also a professor at the School of Architecture and the Built Environment. And I'm Diana, I'm a student, and I'm also the international student ambassador for the course of uh, real estate and uh, construction management. During this webinar, we're going to talk to you about Stockholm, Sweden, and KTH. Um, we will also talk to you about how you can make an application and uh, all the next steps you will take after this presentation. Uh, Bjorn, do you want to get started and tell us why you should come to KTH? Absolutely, Kim. Uh, there are numerous reasons why you should pursue a degree or renew yourself at the Royal Institute of Technology, but this would be my top three reasons to innovate yourself at KTH. Uh, first of all, uh, the high level of education. Uh, we have a master's degree or numerous master's degrees at the highest international standards. Uh, KTH has been consistently ranked among the top 100 universities in the world. Uh, we also like to infuse our students with innovative thinking and an entrepreneurial spirit, which uh, is very useful. And furthermore, you have to spend, or you've got to spend uh, two years or more at one of the safest and most livable cities in the world, Stockholm, my <laughs> hometown. Uh, and I would like to talk a little bit more about Sweden. Uh, for those of you who haven't been here, or perhaps it was a while since you went, went to Sweden, uh, it's renowned because it's very open uh, and multicultural society uh, with a long tradition of welcoming students and foreigners from all over the world. And for those of you who have not been here, uh, well, it's a very large uh, country, uh, smack in the middle in northern Europe, in Scandinavia. Uh, it's big. It's uh, actually larger than Germany, you know. Uh, Size-wise, it's somewhat smaller than France and Spain, but the third largest country within the European Union. Uh, the downside is that it's not too many Swedes, actually, only 10 million people. Mm. So it's a rather sparsely populated country. So if you go to the far north, you can go days on end without seeing anybody. You might bump into a reindeer or two, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, and close to one of out of five Swedes are actually born in another country, so it's kind of international. We do have four distinct seasons. Uh, right now it's autumn, which is my favorite season of the year. Uh, you can go pick mushrooms, lingonberries, uh, and what have you not in the forest. Uh, and soon winter will be coming, which is the <laughs> cold season. <laughs> and then comes, of course, spring and summer. Uh, but Diana, you're not from Sweden. How did you experience the different seasons? <laughs> no, I'm not from Sweden. I'm actually uh, from Brazil. And uh, as a Brazilian, I must say that uh, the climate was the first big difference uh, when I first moved here. Uh, but as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, distinct uh, seasons uh, it's just, uh, it's really, uh, it's really uh, and uh, safe. Uh, and I consider these uh, really um, important aspects uh, for a good quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say it has, uh, Sweden has a really uh, high standard mm -hmm. of uh, quality of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm a fan. I really <laughs> like Sweden. <laughs> That's so nice to hear. Yeah. Have you experienced, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Have you experienced Aurora Borealis yet? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I, I really wanted to go to a bisco that mm -hmm. is uh, really up north Sweden. Mm -hmm. Uh, but every Swede that I ask uh, about uh, Bisco, they mm. said, what are, you, what are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, nothing. But you do need to see the Northern Yeah, West. I really want to <laughs> go uh, and uh, see an experience. But yeah, uh, yeah but I've never... And Sweden is considered a rather progressive country when it comes to gender equality and things like that. And it's also easy to get around, uh, as most Swedes do speak English. Mm -hmm. So you don't risk the chance of getting lost in there. And let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, uh, these might be some of the household names uh, for people outside of Sweden, uh, such as IKEA, if you're a student. I mean, cheap furniture mm -hmm. is all over the planet. And we also have a long tradition of manufacturing, uh, such as Ericsson, Saab and Volvo. Uh, most people tend to know. Or oh, H&M, if you're into clothing. Uh, uh, nowadays, we have another sort of generation of companies growing up. Most people know Skype or listen to Spotify, mm. which is actually uh, a company uh, founded by a former KTH alumni, I've heard. Uh, or some <laughs> 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 and some of you might have played Minecraft 
or Candy Crush. I love Candy Crush. And actually also the modern uh, pacemaker, uh, which roughly a million people worldwide is using right now. It's also a Swedish innovation. So we've gone from a country dependent on a lot of manufacturing to a more innovative economy during the past decades. I actually didn't know that Candy Crush was Swedish, but if you sit on the on the subway, you can yeah. see that there are a lot of people playing. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's King, fantastic company <laughs> on the northern part of Sweden. Mm -hmm. And also to the left, you can actually see the Nobel Prize, uh, which is awarded every December in Sweden, in the city hall. And I think we're going to come back to that later on. But it was actually founded by a Swedish entrepreneur, Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, mm -hmm. uh, who decided to no donate his fortune to, I mean, research. Neat. Mm -hmm. All right, this is Stockholm. Uh, Stockholm is the capital of Sweden and it is the capital of Swedish innovation and trade. Uh, it's home to around 2.1 million people and uh, it's known for its rich cultural history and there are 26 city parks mm. and it's surrounded by water uh, as it is built on 14 islands and you mm. can see in our picture here uh, all of the water around the city hall there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's move on. Stockholm is ranked as the 12th safest city in the world, and it's also the 12th most livable city in the world as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about student life. Do you find that, Diana? Uh, yeah, so uh, Stockholm is home uh, to around 85,000 students, uh, which is uh, proportionately big uh, in comparison to the total population of the city. Uh, so I would say Stockholm is really uh, student friendly. Uh, so, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, all uh, fee-paying students and uh, scholarship holders are uh, guaranteed uh, accommodation for the first year, uh, but this is provided by KTH uh, and the students need to be aware of the uh, application uh, for it. Uh, but trust me, this is a really advantage uh, for uh, international students mm -hmm. uh, because it can be quite uh, hard to find uh, uh, accommodation here. But uh, yeah, yeah, students are guaranteed uh, um, for the first year. Uh, I would also say that it's uh, probably not the cheapest city to live as a student, um, but as I mentioned before, uh, it's, uh, it's a student-friendly city, so there are uh, student discounts uh, basically uh, uh, everywhere, so from the public transportation uh, to, some, uh, uh, to some restaurants, uh, coffee shops, uh, clothes stores, so you just need your student card and um, yeah, go look for discounts that mm -hmm. it, it can save you a lot of money. Um, so talking, ab I, I think it's hard to bring a number uh, uh, of uh, budget you need uh, per month uh, because, uh, yeah, I think the sky's the limit and mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, uh, uh, it depends a lot of uh, the type of accommodation you choose or the type of a standard of life uh, uh, you, you opt for. Uh, but we estimate something around um, uh, a thousand US dollars just to use as a reference um, but of course it can uh, goes it can be a bit uh, more and a bit less mm -hmm. uh, depending on your lifestyle uh, and this include uh, housing food uh, uh, medical care uh, anyway all the extras um, but I would also say that transportation is really good so mm -hmm. wherever you decide to live um, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, you can uh, easily go uh, to and from the campus uh, really easy. I have my bike mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is also an option, uh, mm -hmm. especially for students. Uh, so as long as it's uh, not snowing, uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's <laughs> of course uh, an option for students. Neat. Great. Um, well, thank you for sharing all of that <laughs> useful information, <laughs> Diana. Uh, before we get into more practical details, uh, let's take a look at the KTH campus. Mm -hmm. It's a mix of beautiful old and new buildings. Ooh. As we can see in this picture, this is from the summer. So mm -hmm. let's join um, one of your fellow students, Nicholas. Ooh. Welcome to KTH. My name is Nicholas and I'm a student here. How about I show you around? So you might be able to hear just behind you, there's a stream of people coming out of the subway. They're all headed towards KTH's main campus. Check out these stone walls behind me. First on top of them is a sculpture of a Cerberus. They've been watching over our campus grounds for the past 100 years. KTH is the oldest and largest technical university in Sweden. Not only that, it's the highest ranked.
So this building is the library on campus at KTH. It's one of the main places where students meet. 2013, Barack Obama stood on this exact spot during his visit to KTH to learn about some of the most recent research in sustainable energy. So we're at KTH Entree, and let me tell you what, this is the place of all the spots on campus that you're constantly running into new types of people. So let's go take a look. So when you're brand new to KTH, this place is unbelievably useful. And the staff are really friendly too, like Molly. Hey. So we're on KTH's main campus right now, but there are actually four other campuses that KTH has, each one located throughout Stockholm and near an important industry node. This bustling courtyard is home to the School of Chemistry, Biotechnology, and Health. It's one of five schools at KTH, and as a student, you belong to one of these schools. But you're also able to take courses at other schools, too. The Valhalla Vägen campus, which is our main campus, butts up right next to the Royal National City Park. So you're never too far away from a proper forest path, which is a great mental escape from studies. So here you can get a great view of the city. We're actually on top of what used to be a Red Cross hospital, but the building was recycled into what's called today the President's House. This building got its name because the office of the president of KTH is located here. So just know that if you're ever nearby this building, you just might run into her. Okay, it's a little bit colder down here. We're standing in the heart of Sweden's first nuclear reactor facility. Today, it's used for art exhibitions, theater, opera, and it's even been featured in a music video. New buildings are popping up all around campus to accommodate some of the 13,000 students studying at KTH. They're part of the city within a city feel that you get while studying here. People from all over the globe come and live in these student apartments. So you're bound to meet someone from a new place while living and studying at KTH. So our tour is not over yet. Next up, we have Celine. She's going to show you a bit about student life on campus. Oh, that was Nicholas with the virtual tour. Uh, and now some facts about KDH as of today. To the left, you can see our king, uh, King Carl XVI Gustav, who is the patron and guardian of, of the university. Uh, in the middle picture is actually the newest addition to the faculty, also the buildings, which is the School of Architecture in the rusty metal building, very modern. Uh, and actually from the start, KTH has been at the forefront of innovation and technology. And as you could see in the picture, uh, Nicholas went down to the nuclear reactor hall, uh, which was actually operating in the 50s until somebody realized it was a really bad idea to have a, a nuclear <laughs> reactor in the middle of the capital. Uh, but now it's a fantastic place to be, to have concerts or, or parties or whatever you would like to do. Can students uh, visit? Uh, no, here? they can't. Yeah, yeah, they can't. No. They can't, actually. <laughs> they can't. They can't. Now, nowadays. Nowadays yeah. they can. You go like 50 meters straight into the mm -hmm. earth below the surface. It's a fantastic place. It's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> the first television was also cabled from KDH in, in the 50s. Uh, so over the past close to 200 years, uh, KDH has risen to become one of the leading technological universities in Europe. Uh, and we also saw the graduation place or the ceremony, ceremony uh, in the city hall. Uh, so it will actually celebrate today, it was 50 years ago, since one of the professors in physics, Hannes Alvien, was awarded the Nobel Prize in physics. Uh, and some facts about the KDH, 13,000 students uh, on campus. Uh, we have roughly 2,000 PhD students, uh, more than 300 professors and 5,000 in staff. So we have a lot of staff in comparison with the number of students. We're not the biggest, but the best university in Sweden, I would say, therefore. And uh, now move on to the campus. Yeah, there you go. We're actually right now in the library in the studio uh, with the friendly staff here uh, mm -hmm. and Nicholas went over the courtyard and this is the old KTH campus which celebrated 100 years just two years back. Uh, you can watch concerts here by the Royal Philharmonica Orchestra we do have among our staff 
And what else could you do here, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, KTH has uh, uh, more than uh, one campus, so mm -hmm. we can talk about this uh, uh, later. But uh, I study here in the main mm -hmm. campus. Um, and I and I really like this picture because it really shows uh, the connection of the campus uh, to the city center and the city in general. It's uh, really close to the city center, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it is also surrounded by green areas. Uh, um, Stockholm in general has a lot of uh, green areas, uh, but you can uh, really clearly see in this picture how the campus is uh, hugged by <laughs> 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 uh, really nice uh, green areas. And uh, yeah, I really like this uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you mentioned, in the courtyard, mm -hmm. I would say that would be the monumental uh, entrance mm -hmm. uh, to the campus, and um, it's absolutely beautiful uh, there um, uh, during summer uh, days or like more uh, warmer days. A lot of students uh, hang out together mm -hmm. there, uh, have lunch, uh, uh, stock vitamin <laughs> 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 yeah. for the uh, before the winter. So it's a really good atmosphere. And uh, once I took a picture there and yeah. sent to my um, uh, youngest uh, cousin, and she asked me if I studied in Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> And I said yes, yeah. <laughs> but it, but yeah, it's a really nice uh, area to be, and it's right next to the library yep. where uh, Bjorn said uh, we are. Uh, it's pretty close to the uh, student union also, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a um, lot of these buildings have uh, many uh, sh um, uh, study places yep. uh, to be from more uh, noisy to more uh, silent uh, areas, uh, uh, group rooms, uh, a lot of uh, computers available. Mm. Um, so it's a really nice uh, place to be and study. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's this accommodation area, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, the, the sports center. Mm -hmm. um, there are big uh, courts and a gym. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, a really good uh, student discount in this oh. uh, gym. Nice. <laughs> I used to go there more in the beginning, <laughs> but now <laughs> I'll, I'll go back there. So yeah, uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's really close. It's really, it's um, it's a really nice uh, campus, I'll say. Yeah. And also, um, uh, I know it differs from course to course, uh, but uh, in my program specifically, I didn't have a um, uh, fixed building for the classes. Mm -hmm. So I basically had classes all over the campus and different uh, buildings, uh, uh, you know, so uh, it, it gave a lot of uh, dynamism to the, the student routine, uh, you yeah. know, ch and, and, and it was good uh, to know um, uh, most of these buildings uh, from inside, so yeah. yeah. And we might also add that we have four additional campuses in and around Stockholm. This is the main campus in Ballalavägen. Mm -hmm. But we do have KTH Sista, which is the ICT cluster with thousands of companies within ICT. And also the headquarters of Microsoft, IBM and Ericsson. And south of the city, KTH Södertälje campus is more into logistics, production management and related matters. And also the large truck manufacturer Scania is there. And KTH Flemingsberg is more into health. Uh, and technology, and KTH Solna, which is more into biotech and biomedicine. So depending on your program, you might be taking classes in different parts of Stockholm, but this is the main campus. But it's, it's, uh, it's really uh, easy to get to the other campus yeah. as well. So and as you can see, the public transportation, that will be buses and subway, mm -hmm. uh, is quite close. Yeah. So you can get anywhere kind of fast, and cheap, and safe. And mm. electric scooters are becoming really popular here. Yeah. yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's pros and cons for that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's okay. move on. Okay, uh, Nicholas mentioned Barack Obama. Yeah, he visited KDH a couple of years back, and I was actually there. I didn't see him. <laughs> I didn't get, uh, get out of my office the entire day because they had sharpshooters on all the roofs. Mm -hmm. So we were advised to stay in our <laughs> office. Uh, but here he is uh, looking at um, some innovation when it comes to sustainable and renewable energy. Uh, and at the right, we have the famous Stephen Hawking. He visited KDH two years back on a conference in black hole theory, I've heard. And I actually saw him, but I, I was kind of starstruck, so I, I didn't dare uh, to get up to him and take a selfie. Uh, but I actually saw him, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> so exciting. Yeah, so a lot of famous people tend to visit KTH uh, every now and then. Um, KTH, as I said in, in the beginning, consistently among the top 100 uh, in the QS ranking, for instance. And there are different departments or schools that might be higher ranked. I'm with the uh, School of Architecture and Built Environment. And we usually are ranked among top 25 or 30. 
uh, as are other departments such as material science or mechanical and electrical engineering. Uh, so we are small, but, but we are at the cutting edge of research and education, I would say. Um, moving on to the structure, yeah. perhaps, of education. Uh, we have adopted the Bologna model uh, when it comes to education in that the first three years uh, or undergraduate studies are usually taught in Swedish. Um, we have one program in English in ICT. But what you're probably looking for is the master's degree, which is a two-year program. Uh, and they have more or less the same structure, irrespective of, of the subject field or topic, in that you have three semesters uh, with a combination of elective and mandatory courses. And, and you finish your studies with a degree project for five or six months. And if you haven't get enough, uh, you can always pursue a, a doctoral degree as well <laughs> here at KDH. Uh, but the doctoral master's program are taught in uh, English uh, as well as the doctoral program. Yeah, I uh, might add that uh, it's, uh, this structure was, uh, it's really different from uh, my home country. Mm -hmm. um, Considering the calendar and the, the big holidays that it's uh, uh, on December and January, yeah. so <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> but um, uh, I like uh, the the structure when it comes uh, uh, to that the fact that you have uh, uh, one year and then you have two semesters and then uh, on the semester you have two periods. Um, yeah. So it's easy to keep up the keep to keep the studies yeah. uh, going. So uh, you have more or less uh, seven uh, weeks of classes and then you yeah. have the exam and then another seven weeks uh, of classes and then the exam again. So uh, you cannot uh, accumulate <laughs> <laughs> a lot and let, um, let uh, study just in the end of the semester. Yeah. So it's I like the, the structure uh, the way it is uh, uh, because of that. Uh, so you yeah. can just uh, keep track of your studies yeah. <laughs> better, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. KTH has five academic schools, and we offer 60 master's programs uh, within these schools, um, and 15 of those are joint master's programs, which are offered in partnership with other prominent universities around the world. Um, Bjorn, do you want to get into the programs a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. I will start <laughs> with the School of Architecture and the Built Environment, which is my school. Uh, we have quite a few different uh, master programs. Obviously, Diana is taking one of them. Yeah the real <laughs> estate and construction management master. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have other masters focusing on sort of viable cities or sustainable cities regarding transportation or, or and other areas. To how do we build a better future actually? And also architecture, which is a very popular master program. How do you like <laughs> your yeah, program I so far, <laughs> Diana? Um, I am actually an architect, um, mm -hmm. but um, I was always more interested on the uh, project management part of it, uh, uh, more than the design uh, phase itself. So I, n I know I, um, I can take adv advantage of my architect uh, abilities, mm. but my focus is more on uh, management. Okay. Uh, so I thought this uh, course uh, uh, was uh, uh, pretty suitable for me, uh, not only because it's really focused on uh, construction management, but it brings this uh, real estate, uh, economic, uh, finance uh, aspects as well. That is, uh, it's quite new for me. So it's, um, it was a mix that I thought it, uh, it would, uh, it could only add uh, to mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the future career, career are, I'm uh, pursuing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then we have the School of Electrical Engineering or pu Computer Science. Uh, they have a, a few different joint EIT program, which you said came, that was something in collaboration with European universities. You tend to spend one year abroad and one year at KDH. And uh, so a lot on in from EICT, obviously, uh, and some of these programs are taught at ICT cluster in Chista or KTH Chista. Uh, everything from the very small, such as nanotechnology, to the very big, like nuclear energy. Uh, and ob obviously AI and software being super important and very popular topics. Yeah, I'll just interrupt you. Yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> to let uh, the, the students know that when you mention Shifta, it's yeah. actually with a uh, K. K. So uh, yeah. for the ones who don't speak Swedish, yeah, uh, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, yeah, I, we always uh, read uh, uh, Kista. Kista, so yeah. Shista. Sh <laughs> that's a share word. Yeah, yeah. 
thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the School of Engineering Science. Uh, and this is sort of traditional engineering. You build stuff, be it a, a railway or, or, or a ship, like a naval architecture, or a spaceship, or a fighter jet, as aerospace. Um, we also have the only astronaut in Sweden. It's also used to be a program director for some of the programs here at the Engineering Science School. Uh, moving on, uh, one of the newer schools, Engineering Science in Chemistry, Biotech and Health. Uh, everything from polymer chemistry, which is taught here at the, the main campus, Valhalla Wagen, and other topics are, are taught at Flemingsberg, which is more into medtech and biotech, which is becoming increasingly popular research area, as well as for startups within uh, KDH. And finally, last but in no way least, uh, Industrial Engineering and Management. Here we have one of the more popular programs, being industrial management, where you combine sort of business and engineering. Uh, but also some of these programs are taught at KTA Södertälje in collaboration with Scania, the lorry manufacturer, for instance, on logistics and product engineering. Uh, so there's a wide selection of different programs depending on your interest uh, and what you're aiming for, what kind of career you're aiming for. So should we move on to how to the admission? No. Oh, studies at KTH. Uh, this might be different uh, depending on where you're from, uh, what you have taught on your undergraduate studies. Uh, master programs tend to be smaller. Uh, depending on, on what program you're taking, a course might be 30 to 40 students, or up to 100 perhaps then. So a very personal approach to education. And we also try to foster the entrepreneurial spirits among our students to take courses in entrepreneurship and to be more problem solving like engineers. Uh, and we also have a, a structure of, of courses that are based on different sort of, a lot of lectures obviously, uh, but also seminars. And we do focus a lot of teamwork. Uh, and what's your experience of teamwork, Diana? Is that <laughs> dynamic forum of teaching? Or? Yeah, it was actually uh, really productive. Uh, and I'll add that uh, I had a lot of um, guest lectures uh, from uh, really big companies. Uh, so I think basically all my uh, projects um, uh, were based in Rio cases uh, from Rio companies. And then in the end, we presented to these uh, companies. Uh, so it was a really good way of experiencing um, like this uh, professional uh, uh, real life, uh, not just uh, hypothetical situations. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, networking with these uh, big companies. Um, and um, about the teamwork, I think this is uh, um, a high uh, uh, aspect uh, here at KTH because uh, uh, we are from everywhere in the world. So uh, you end up in a group with a lot of, um, with different uh, nationalities uh, and backgrounds. Uh, so this is really rich for discussion. So you can end up in a group like uh, with a Brazilian, mm -hmm. with a Me Mexican, with a guy from uh, Rwanda, the other from Hong Kong. So it's really, uh, it's really uh, rich uh, discussions, uh, and of course, uh, different point of points of view. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that I uh, that I really like yep. about the, the the structure and the teamwork. Yeah. Yep. And we also have a lot of infrastructure regarding startups, for instance, KTH Innovation, mm -hmm. that helps researchers and students form their own companies, as well as the twelve strategic partners that we have within industries, such as Scania, or Saab, or whatever. That could also be, be useful when you're finalizing your study with a degree project. I mean, sometimes that is done in collaboration with our industrial partners. OK, now it's over to admission. <laughs> yes, uh, the admission requirements. So mm -hmm. now that we've heard how mm -hmm. it is to be at KCH, uh, how do we get here? Uh, well, you need to meet the admissions requirements, of course, and that is a bachelor degree uh, or the equivalent of a Swe Swedish bachelor's degree. And you also need to show that you have English proficiency as our master's programs are given in English. Uh, so you can do that through a TOEFL or an IELTS test or through your upper secondary studies. Um, so there are various ways you can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also need to meet the program specific requirements as well. And you can find out all about this at keyteach.se under the master's program that mm -hmm. you're interested in. Um, there are fees for non-EU students uh, or non-EU citizens, um, and so, or yeah, so non-EU citizens are required to pay an application fee 
of 900 Swedish crowns, which is about 100 US dollars right now, um, and a tuition fee of about three or 310,000 Swedish crowns, which is about 34,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for most of our two-year programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you are a tuition fee paying student, uh, we highly encourage you to apply for scholarships. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer a few here at mm -hmm. KTH. Uh, we have a KTH scholarship, which is a one or two year uh, tuition fee waiver, depending on which program you're applying mm -hmm. to. Uh, we also have a one year scholarship uh, that you could apply for during your first year that would cover the tuition fee for the second year. Uh, we also have joint program scholarships mm -hmm. uh, that you can apply for. So if you're going to spend a semester or a year at KTH, mm -hmm. uh, the tuition fee would be waived for that, pro mm -hmm. that portion of the program while you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also a KTH India scholarship mm -hmm. uh, for Indian citizens that is a tuition fee waiver and it also includes a living allowance. Uh, and then there's also the Swedish Institute that offers about 300 scholarships mm -hmm. to uh, students coming to Swedish universities. Uh, so that one. Yeah. Uh, is a good scholarship to apply for. Uh, and then there's a number of external scholarships yeah. you can apply for, and we highly encourage you to just check different scholarship portals okay. uh, and find any and all of the scholarships that you could be eligible for. Yeah, quite a lot, mm -hmm. seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so how do you make your application? Mm -hmm. There is a national application portal called the University Admissions, um, and all of the universities in Sweden uh, actually use this portal. Uh, so you can choose up to four programs and you prioritize them in, uh, mm -hmm. according to your preference. Uh, and then you need to gather all of your documents and submit your application by the 15th of January. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, because scholarship applications are separate from the admissions, uh, you need to apply for the KTH scholarship, apply for the SI scholarships, um, and then submit all of your documents by the or the document deadline, which is the 1st of February, and you need to make sure that you pay the application fee as well. <coughs> and then, on the 9th of April, that is when you will get your admissions decision. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Yeah, I can add that um, it's, uh, it's a simple application, but it has uh, different steps that you must uh, be really aware of. Uh, and um, I also, I, I've been receiving some questions uh, regarding the application and I, and I, s and I just answered that uh, um, you really need to check carefully uh, the requirements, uh, but the steps of application and also the deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it, it is supposed to be smooth, but, uh, but since it, you, you also use the university admissions uh, uh, website, it mm -hmm. might be a bit confusing, but it's not. It's just uh, following the steps correctly. Yeah. Um, and just again, it's two different deadlines. You need to submit your application on the 15th of January, and then you can complete your application with all of the supporting documents by the 1st of February and make sure that you pay your uh, application fee on the 1st of February as well. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. And so if you are admitted to KTH, uh, that means that uh, you need to apply for accommodation and apply for a residence permit uh, so that you can come here in August. Yeah. Um, and we offer an arrival service, um, there's an introduction week, uh, and different language classes, both in English and in Swedish. Uh, Diana, how was it when you arrived here? Uh, yeah, it was actually uh, really fun. <laughs> uh, um, KTH offers this um, a ride uh, from <laughs> K with the KTH bus from the airport uh, straight to the university, and that is, uh, yeah, for you arriving in a new country, uh, it's uh, super useful with all your bags and stuff yeah. and stuff um, but there are also plenty of uh, activities mm. during the first uh, uh, week uh, at KTH uh, so i remember i participated on this uh, tour on the Nobel uh, museum mm -hmm. and then there was an activity with the uh, ice hockey team from Ooh. KTH yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. but there are plenty of activities you just uh, you can just register uh, um, uh, most of them are free. Mm. There are some barbecues. Uh, yeah, so the things that you won't be alone, and mm. if you feel you, yeah, you'll be, uh, you have no friends, uh, you mm. make friends uh, yeah, <laughs> this okay, week okay. because everyone is uh, in the same uh, situation as you. Yeah, cool. mm. yeah. Um, and again, there are plenty of contacts you mm. can take. There's a master's coordinator uh, that you can always get in touch with for your academic questions. Mm. Um, and then we also offer counseling and health services and support for students with disabilities mm. as well. Um, so, maybe. So, 
what do you do after you graduate uh, is a big question, of <laughs> course. Uh, well, there are numerous uh, different pathways. Um, KTH being uh, the leading supplier of CEOs for Swedish industry for a number of years, that will be the combination of business and engineering, which I think most employers find very useful. Uh, the second middle picture there is from the fair, or the THS Armada fair, which is uh, the largest career fair here at KDH, where 150 plus companies present themselves and try to find new recruitments. Uh, we'll see how that will work out in these COVID times, mm -hmm. but we're engineers, so we'll, we'll figure a way out, I <laughs> guess. Uh, there's a wide selection of different employers. These would be the top 10 employers, or 12, uh, for uh, students graduating in 2018. Ericsson, for instance, and Scania being some very traditional, mature Swedish manufacturing companies. Uh, but there are others as well, in within finance and, and telecom. And KTH, for instance, is also a large employer of so our master's students. Um, the first job after KTH, well, uh, the thing is, I do a lot of teaching at the master level, and, and my experience is that most students have a job in their final year or in their fourth year, perhaps in the third year as well. <laughs> uh, so they might not turn up for, for each and every lecture. Uh, so employability is very high. Uh, and when you're done and if you're not sure whether to go back to your home country or stay and make Sweden your new home, you're allowed to stay another year looking for job opportunities. And one way of finding a job um, is actually to do your degree project together with a company. I mean, we do have a portal at KTH that lists the sort of 500 plus projects that companies would like to get help with from our students. Uh, so one out of five gets their first job through project works. And also one out of seven start their own company after sort of graduating from KTH. Uh, and you'll be not alone. I mean, we have 80,000 alumni all over the world. <laughs> we have 10 chapters all around the world from Bangkok to New York. Uh, so we KTH is everywhere <laughs> to some extent. Uh, and I said at KTH, oh sorry. Um, no, no, I, no? Can <laughs> 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 I can just uh, add that uh, I will actually start my thesis uh, yeah. next uh, semester. Uh, so it uh, it will start uh, early January mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be done by uh, late uh, May uh, or early June, ah. uh, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do now, to uh, contact the company, just to um, uh, volu voluntarily uh, present myself and yep. present uh, my uh, proposals mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I can really uh, write uh, with the company and um, I think that's probably the best way yeah. to not only let the company uh, know your work, but uh, for you also to know the company yeah. that uh, it can be a future employee. So I think it's a really good um, uh, exchange uh, um, uh, of knowledge. Uh, but yeah, but I'm on this stage now looking for companies. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, we, talk about we talked about a lot of uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. And indeed, there are a lot of opportunities. But uh, uh, I must say that they they don't they don't just fall from the sky you really need to go after them um, so some companies open uh, these uh, 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 vacancies for uh, uh, with their proposal that they want to develop with the students or uh, you can voluntarily present yourself mm -hmm. and bring an idea mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this is how uh, things work uh, yeah. Um, yeah but that's my, my initial yeah. plan great for you yeah. And another way to, to pursue a career is to f continue w with getting a PhD. And that is also something becoming increasingly more popular. Uh, roughly 30% of all master students pursue a PhD here. And it's somewhat different f from uh, other countries in that you actually get employed by KTH. Uh, and we put out ad for all our vacant PhD positions once a month. And we have quite a lot. We have 2,000 PhD students here. Uh, and more than half of them are actual international students. So, and uh, we talked about Swedish or English before. I mean, English is the way we communicate in most departments here because we have a lot of international staff. So it's three years of, of research and uh, one year of courses. Typically, you would take the coursework when you start and then you're done with that. Then you pursue your research career. Uh, so this is also something that is becoming increasingly popular to pursue a PhD here at KDH. Mm -hmm. 
and now student <laughs> life. Student life. Let's now hear it. The fun part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually realized I don't uh, take as many pictures <laughs> as I <laughs> thought I had. But um, anyway, um, I think uh, I grabbed some uh, good ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so to start with the library uh, mm -hmm. is uh, where we are right now. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite spots uh, to study. Um, as you can see, it's uh, really uh, nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure future students will be here quite a lot as mm. well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, they're also, I've learned that Swedes love to be outside, even though, even on uh, really cold days. Yeah. Is that true, Bjorn? <laughs> <Yeah, healthy. laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, and I didn't understand why, but mm. now, uh, like, you can see there are so many beautiful uh, uh, views uh, and uh, so close to the nature that it, and, and there are so many uh, fresh air. It's actually really good to be outside and uh, be on this uh, outdoor uh, activity. So this is uh, me outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right, uh, right below there is an uh, ice hockey match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was my first time experiencing um, mm. um, this kind of sports. Mm. Uh, and uh, no, it wasn't me playing. Next time. Next <laughs> time. Um, and of course, this, this was a pre-COVID uh, uh, picture. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no idea how this is going to be. Um, um, in the future, but uh, yeah, it it's a big sport here, and it's uh, actually pretty fun to watch. Um, uh, then there's also me eating a semla, <laughs> <laughs> which is a really um, good uh, <laughs> um, bun they have here. Uh, it's actually a s uh, it, it they just sell uh, in a certain period of the year, and uh, I know uh, Sweden is known uh, for their cannelbulli, that's mm. a cinnamon bun, but this one is uh, much better. So uh, write down this name and <laughs> <laughs> and try on yeah. later because it's uh, actually really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think this is Sweden in a dish because yeah. it's uh, it's super Swedish, I would say, uh, and it's really good. Uh, I mean, uh, either you love it or hate it because it's a herring. <laughs> Yeah. But it's uh, it's really good, super fresh. Yeah. Um, it's really common on uh, summer, I guess. Yeah. Um, and Christmas. And Christmas. And Easter. <laughs> whenever weekends. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. it's actually uh, pretty uh, tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have a couple of yeah. yeah. So these are actually all uh, Stockholm pictures, and I know it's really easy to relate Sweden <laughs> to snow <laughs> and gray yeah. uh, days, like the pictures in the left, uh, which I which I love, <laughs> but I want um, the future students to stick with the picture of the middle mm. in their minds because uh, that was actually taken last summer mm. uh, here uh, near Stockholm. And it was uh, it was my first summer here in mm -hmm. Sweden, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely awesome mm -hmm. because uh, I was um, I wasn't expecting to be that uh, warm and uh, th like that summer vibes, but uh, it was um, it was really fun. And there are many lakes, uh, of course, uh, around, and many islands. You can just uh, grab a boat and go with your friends, mm -hmm. uh, have a couple of beers. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. It's uh, and uh, the the water is uh, cold uh, for Brazilian, but. <laughs> you <did also> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but it's still uh, super fun. Uh, yeah, the picture on the top right is uh, me and the other um, student uh, ambassadors. Um, so one thing that we didn't mention that uh, I might uh, highlight now that uh, each course has this uh, student ambassador and you can uh, contact us. So this is uh, uh, just a few of them mm -hmm. there. Um, and to finalize, just a picture uh, taken in the students' union building. Mm. Uh, and there's this uh, small uh, phrase that uh, uh, I like a lot. It's, uh, it's a bit cliche, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's true. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope it uh, inspires future uh, students of KTH um, to know yeah, that knowledge uh, is power. <laughs> mm. cool. Well, on that note. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that takes us to the end of our presentation. Yeah. So uh, I can just reiterate that uh, for all of the master's programs, you can find the information on our website, kth.se. Um, and also you can follow us on any of these social media channels and subscribe to our KTH newsletter. Um, and you can also get in touch with our student ambassadors like mm -hmm. Diana. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, yeah, you just uh, need to go to the course you're interested in and um, uh, in the end you will find out uh, which uh, student you should contact if you want a student perspective, an honest uh, student perspective uh, of the course. If you want to take, um, uh, if you want to ask about uh, the specific course or the life in, in Stockholm, uh, just uh, feel free. I'm pretty sure me and the other uh, student ambassadors will be pretty happy to <laughs> answer and help uh, future students. Wonderful. So now we have time for a few questions. Thank you for the presentation. We have received a lot of questions here in the back room. And the first one is, what are the biggest challenges for students to complete the courses? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> a good question. Uh, we can take the professor's perspective <laughs> and then the student's perspective. Uh, my experience is that there's a lot of distractions. Obviously, you're living in the capital Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. You can go skating or playing <laughs> ice hockey or go to the pub. We have a very rich student life here as well. So there's a lot of things that could be meddling with your academic career. Mm -hmm. so, so my a lack of focus, I would say sometimes, that you do other things or you work too much part-time or, or evenings perhaps. Because uh, we have really bright students, but sometimes they tend to get distracted, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I think uh, uh, here there you have the right facilities to study. You have uh, really good teachers. You have a really good um, um, uh, uh, relationship with the teachers in mm -hmm. a really horizontal way. Like you, you have your teacher's uh, phone number. I've mm -hmm. never seen this <laughs> <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. So it's really easy to... Uh, 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 getting contact and uh, yeah it, so mm. I would say mostly distractions and if your focus is not uh, really on the studies or somewhere else or mm. work or uh, yeah but mm. I would say if you're focused on the studies um, you can you can complete the course yeah. uh, in time yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Are scholarships given on the basis of academic record? Yes, scholarships are, uh, well, they're evaluated on a few different uh, factors. Mm -hmm. uh, so academic excellence is definitely the primary factor, um, but then we also look at uh, extracurricular experience, uh, if you've been published or if you have relevant work experience, um, and then also uh, the ranking of the university that you've taken your bachelor's as well is factored in. Mm -hmm. Does uh, KTH recommend work experience from incoming students? I think um, from an admissions perspective, uh, some of the programs do, uh, they do ask for a CV uh, or letters of recommendation, um, and that would be listed as a program specific requirement. Uh, Diana, was that one of the requirements for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it differs uh, from uh, course to course, so it's really important to check uh, on the course uh, you're interested in, but uh, for the real estate and construction management, I can say that they ask um, um, letter of motiva motivation, letter of recommendation, and uh, work experience. So it can be a CV. Yeah. Or so again, it can depend yeah. uh, just based on which program you're interested in applying to. Thanks. Another question is, uh, is it possible to start part-time work while doing a master's? Yeah, I would say that it's become increasingly common that students tend to work part-time. It uh, could be part in that the living expenses could be kind of high in Stockholm in comparison with other university cities in, in, in Sweden. Uh, but uh, yeah, I it's doable, I would mm -hmm. say. You, you might give yeah. some additional insights. Diana. Yeah, I know it, uh, you are allowed to mm. part-time work uh, if you have the... Uh, uh, residence uh, permit uh, as a non-European uh, uh, student and uh, as a European student you're allowed as well um, so you can do it uh, mm. but it's really important to manage uh, uh, your time for work and just and uh, studies because uh, mm. many of the court the classes are not mandatory so mm. it's really easy to just uh, skip them but uh, I wouldn't say this is the best uh, choice if you're really focused on um, uh, studies because participating in lectures is also a way of saving time. Actually. Yeah. So. 
uh, but you can work. It's uh, it's a it's a personal choice. Yeah. Is there a tuition fee or application fee fee for EU citizens? Uh, no, only non-EU uh, citizens are required to pay the application fee. And how many students are there generally in one program? I would say it uh, differs from program to program. Um, could be anywhere from like 40, 50 up to 100 mm -hmm. per program or, or even more. Uh, but the classes tend to be smaller in that you might have a couple of mandatory courses in the beginning. But then you specialize within the program. So I would say at the end you might be 20, 30 or 40 within a given course up to a 60. But it's very much dependent on the program and your interest. Uh, but classes tend to be smaller at the end of, of your education. And at the very end it's only you or, or possibly <laughs> a companion who are doing the degree project work. So left your own. Can the selection results be released earlier than the 9th of April? Uh, no. So even if you apply now, the application period is open now um, and the deadline is the 15th of January. Uh, it doesn't matter when you apply, everybody who makes an application receives the notification on the same day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will find out if you're admitted <laughs> on the 9th of April. Exciting day. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some of the essential things to bring while coming to Sweden, mm. Stockholm? Oh, that's for you, Diana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I would say not much. Um, um, but uh, like, if you're from a tropical country, as I am, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say to let. Uh, uh, live to buy uh, heavy uh, winter clothes uh, here since uh, yeah I think it, it it might be a bit better than bring it from uh, your home country if you're if you're from a tropical <laughs> <laughs> country like Brazil yeah. but um, but I would say here in Sweden uh, the average price of uh, clothes uh, shoes and other stuff are a bit uh, um, higher than in other countries, so that might it might be um, smart to bring some things from home. But I would say you don't need much as a student. Okay, okay. <laughs> but did you bring any fur hats or something like that from Brazil, or did you buy it here? Yeah, uh, we don't we don't use you them. Don't use them. <laughs> 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 yeah. I bring home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so winter clothing you buy here, basically. Yeah. Yeah, because you find proper clothes yeah. uh, here, uh, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. not much. Uh, keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How are the studies at KTH affected by COVID-19? Wow. I, I can take it from the professor's perspective mm -hmm. again. Uh, we, we tend to do blended teaching right now in that uh, we use online tools such as Zoom primarily, uh, where we have lectures uh, and seminars. and. I have actually been teaching a course in Introduction to Real Estate. We actually allowed 50 students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of Zoom and on-campus teaching. Uh, and that was for, for the first year. Year two, three, four, five has been more on into online teaching as of now. Yeah, I now have all my classes online. Um, but I would say the first uh, uh, period, uh, it was uh, April, uh, when it just, uh, Corona just hit, uh, I think uh, it was a challenge for both students and professors. So it was a bit like, uh, what, are, what are we doing? So um, it was a bit messy in the beginning, but uh, for this period, uh, um, uh, I think all students participated on this feedback mm -hmm. uh, uh, survey. So they improved uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. So the classes are uh, much better organized uh, now. Uh, yeah, I think the whole world uh, <laughs> passed yeah. it through some uh, adjustments, um, but uh, I, I now have uh, all my classes online, uh, but I know uh, it depends also, so it's a bit mixed uh, on campus and uh, online. Yeah, and as you can see right now, I mean, there are a lot of students on campus mm -hmm. uh, interacting in different ways, so. Yeah. But the most teaching is online, but students are here to hang out. Thank you. Next question. How much Swedish do I have to learn to get around in Sweden and finding a job? What do you say, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> How much Swedish do you have to know? Uh, 
How much do in you know? In theory, <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. um, in theory, uh, you don't need a Swedish uh, because uh, I think every every Swede can speak uh, really good English. Mm. Um, but uh, I would uh, strongly recommend to uh, learn a basic uh, as a way to connect with the culture mm -hmm. and uh, to know uh, other Swedes and to understand the Swedish lifestyle. Uh, uh, yeah, but um, I'm learning now. It's mm -hmm. a process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on that stage that I uh, start a, a conversation really confident. <laughs> but if something goes out of the script, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just uh, want to faint okay. and, <laughs> and call my so. mom to, go back, <laughs> to uh. go back to my country. But uh, it's a process. Uh, yeah. But I strongly recommend it to, um, to learn. But mm. no, uh, you don't necessarily need. Uh, although some uh, jobs uh, actually require uh, mm. Swedish, uh, but more international companies, uh, uh, yeah, it's it has a more international uh, yeah. uh, Context and yeah, the corporate language would be English uh, yeah. in big companies, mm -hmm. and a lot of the startup companies in at KDH is also started. I mean, by an international crowd, like mm -hmm. researchers and students. So English will get you a long way. Yeah, I would say. How do you feel? Okay. Very good. That's amazing. Really. Great, so we are receiving a lot of questions about the KTH scholarship, so here is two in one. Do KTH scholarship cover accommodation? And can I apply for the KTH scholarship and the Swedish Institute scholarship for the same program? Uh, the for so to answer the first part of the question, mm -hmm. uh, does the KTH scholarship uh, cover accommodations? Unfortunately not. Uh, the KTH scholarship is a tuition fee waiver. Uh, and then the second part of the question, if you should apply for the Swedish Institute scholarship for the same program, uh, yes, um, because the KTH scholarship application is completely separate from the Swedish Institute. Um, and also, uh, just to say uh, that the KTH scholarship, uh, it needs to be, your application needs to be for the program that you select as your first priority. Uh, and so, you would only be able to get the KTH scholarship for that program. So, question about student life. Are there sports and cultural activities that you can take part in while studying at KTH? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of... Uh, uh, sports you can uh, join there are some uh, teams I uh, was part of the basketball uh, uh, not the team <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the training session oh once yeah. uh, in the f this first week of activities at KTH um, uh, you can get to know uh, most of them since they had this stance that mm -hmm. you can ask for information and they're always uh, posting uh, when they have this uh, open training so you can join um, so I would say there are plenty of uh, the hockey, uh, ice hockey, hockey team, team is hockey really. Team, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of ice hockey. Like Next I semester. play a lot. <laughs> I don't play a lot. I don't play at all. Um, but uh, the the their team is quite uh, big, I think. Uh, but there are, I would say, uh, I know there are this vo uh, volleyball team, football, the basketball. So yeah, there are plenty of. Uh, we have a theater uh, association, a mm. wine club, mm. as well. So. Really? If you're into culture, oh. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, have some well notes professors here. Only. <laughs> yeah. So we do have quite a lot of different, depending on your interests. Uh -huh. that you can yeah, and about. I would add that it's uh, during winter it's really important for you to just uh, um, find something, a sport or uh, something mm -hmm. that uh, makes you active, because yep. it can be really dark and uh, yeah, it's good to move your yeah. body. You don't want to hibernate. <laughs> no. Yeah. We have time for uh, one more live question, and mm. that is, is there a limit for the students that will s be selected for a master program? Yeah, depending on the program, we do have a fixed number of, of students that, that, that we do admit. And that depends on the program, actually. Uh, so even though they might have fantastic grades from the bachelor level, we have a cap when it comes to how many we can admit to each and every program. 
All right. Uh, well, I guess that brings us to the end. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar today. Uh, thank you, Bjorn. Thank yeah. you, Diana. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I would like you to, um, well, for the audience, please uh, register for our upcoming mm -hmm. webinars. Uh, there are there is one for each school coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, and just so that you know, the chat will be open for one more hour. So if you did not receive an, an answer to your question, please continue to submit them and uh, we will answer your questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>